Well, a warm welcome to Christchurch's Daily Reflection. I'm Terence Russell, and today we're looking at Psalm 51 under the title of A Spiritual Spring Clean. Um, last week, I gave my cream-coloured staircase carpet a deep stream spring clean. There'd been this ghastly brown stain on the landing for ages, which really irritated me every time I looked at it. So I got some special cleaning chemicals and dealt with the stain. And what a difference. The carpet is now transformed into a gleaming cream colour again. And afterwards, I was struck by how this so lifted my spirit. I somehow felt cleaner too. And this led me to reflect that if I could feel this way about a mere carpet, how much more delighted must God must be when we come before him, repent of when we've done wrong things and ask him to clean and purify us spiritually. And that's what David does in Psalm 51. This is a heart-rending psalm of contrition. David knows he's failed God, been publicly exposed for adultery and murder. He's distraught at the thought of what he held most dear, a close relationship with God, is now at peril of being lost. And it tore into his soul. And David's way of expressing contrition is a great model for us too, to protect and help develop our relationship with God. So what does David do? Well, first, he pours out his heart in confession. He pleads to God according to mercy, for according to his unfailing love and great compassion. In verse 1, he asks God to blot out his sins, but he does more. He doesn't just want God to pardon, but he asks God to purify and cleanse him. He appeals to be washed clean with hyssop and made whiter than snow, verse 7. And the Hebrew word used for wash is not the word used for basic washing like we'd use, like for, say, cleaning dishes. It's the word used for scrubbing laundry by pounding and beating. David was asking God not just for forgiveness, but a thorough cleansing from his sinful nature. And hyssop was a fragrant herb associated with ritual cleansing and purification. And here symbolises the cleansing of David's soul and heart with a fresh fragrance. And only once his sins have confessed, forgiven and purged, does David dare ask God for his choicest gifts to be restored back to him. Create in me, O oh, a pure heart, O oh God, renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit away from me. Possibly the worst thing that could happen to us. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. And the Hebrew word used for create is the same word used in Genesis that God uses when he creates from nothing. In other words, David didn't just want a cleansed heart, but he wanted a freshly made heart. He wanted to regain the joy of being in close and righteous relationship with God. Now, we've not committed, obviously, murder like David, but we all sin and all need our hearts scrubbed clean by God. So let's ask God to show us what we need to confess and be pardoned from. And it could be any number of things, some visible, some hidden, except, of course, from God. Maybe we've actions we've done that we've not repented of, or words we've said that have wounded, or thoughts we've had which aren't of God and drive our behaviours in the wrong direction, or prejudices and biases we carry deep within us that we've not properly acknowledged and dealt with. And then let's follow David's example in this psalm and ask God to wash us clean so we can fully experience his joyful gifts again, the joy of salvation and his abiding presence with us. Because not only would it delight God, but it totally rejuvenates our soul and our heart. And in a way many times greater than seeing my cleansed carpet uplifting though that is. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that you're a God of unfailing love and compassion. 
Show me those things which I need to confess, which are harming my relationship with you, for which I appeal for your mercy and pardon. Wash me clean and make me whiter than white and create in me instead a pure heart and restore to me the joy of your salvation. Amen. Well, the piece of music I've chosen to help us reflect on this magnificent psalm is a classical piece. It's the Miserere, or the Cry for Mercy, by, by Allegri. And apparently a young Mozart astonishingly transcribed this note perfect after just one hearing. And I encourage you today just to set aside a few moments to reflect and, on and pray through this psalm, accompanied by Allegri's music. And if you go on YouTube, there's a glorious rendition by the choir of King's College, Cambridge. Enjoy and have a blessed day.